Hi everyone. I'm a public high school teacher in Australia and I help run a marine science and aquaculture technology course for uh, our year 9 and 10, so think uh, 14, 15 year olds. Um, basically we have a classroom here with some tanks in it and a tank room over there but we're in a car park and my head teacher actually built these walls a few years ago to, to set up this this facility but basically i'm after some advice i want you guys to help me kind of realize the potential in what we have here because i feel like we've got the the bare bones or skeleton of a really good um facility um so yeah, I just, I'll, I'll walk you through. I might ramble a bit, I apologize, but um, if you see anything that you think could be approved upon, whether that be safety or uh, any sort of program or uh, project or assessment that we could integrate, um, please let me know. Uh, we've, obviously we've got tables and our screen over there for teaching. Um, here we have the kind of the main focus is this, um, flow through system that's completely underutilized at the moment. Uh, in the past it's had um, salt water running through um, and I think we had barramundi and perch in there. At the moment it's fresh water with just some um, uh, yabbies or freshwater crustaceans. Um, really they're just, it's a storage tank at the moment. I was thinking if we could get the right lighting set up, and I don't know whether we'd need carbon dioxide, but some sort of plant propagation um, project would be great here. Um, but if you think of any, uh, you know, any, anything that we could do in terms of fish or breeding um, with with these tanks, um, let me know. I, where this is all plastic in here, so we can't really heat the room, um, you know, with a, a big heater and maintain it throughout the year. So. Um, I was hoping something that can tolerate low temperatures so that we don't have to spend a lot of money to um, you know, put heaters in every single one of these tanks. Um, basically, this, this whole place is run off of student fees, which is around about $40 per student per year, and we have about 60 or 70 students, so it's not a huge amount of money to keep this place going. Um, in the centre, we have uh, salt water tanks. These two are empty at the moment. We've only got one... Uh, by fish in there at the moment and it's yeah it's really quite sad um so I, i'm not an expert in salt water I, I would love of course to have you know a coral reef system or something like that but the idea is that this whole place is run by students and not just by me because I, I can't run on this place all on my own so um yeah saltwater fish if you think i mean it's, it's pretty algae filled at the moment um and just a bit sad looking um we were donated a turtle from a house um, nearby. We never intended on having a turtle here, but we said we'd take him. Um, I know the water looks a bit yellow. We've just had some wood in there. Um, he seems pretty happy. Uh, we keep the water um, pretty pretty well in there, but I know it doesn't look very, very great. Um, we tried putting plants in, but he ate them all. Uh, we set up a nice system for him to bake. We've got a UV light, of course, and a, and a heater for him, um, but he... I think he's, he's. I think he's 12 now, and throughout his life, he's never actually had access to a, a platform. So when we put a platform in, he never used it, um, and it was just a place for food to get trapped and algae to grow. Uh, but yeah, if you're a turtle expert, give me some advice. This is our intended uh, aquaponics system. The water recirculates between them. Uh, we have one barramundi in here. We, we had a bit of a ammonia spike recently and we lost a, a fair few um, barramundi. We tried growing a range of herbs and some tomatoes in there, but that didn't work out. So I think we're going to put something a bit more hearty in there next year. Um, the idea being with this system that um, you know the, the, the kids learn about nutrient cycling and, and um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether our lighting setups uh, set up well, well enough to, to support um, a whole range of plants, um, but pretty cool nonetheless. Um, I'll walk you over. Oh, this is our snorkeling stuff. We went for a snorkel to the end of the year. Um, I'll take you to our tank room. This is kind of the pride and joy that I've been working on. This is gravel and, and storage and chemicals and food. So this used to be a storage uh, space. Now it is our tank room. Um, I won't talk through every tank, but basically... I see them, that they're all ready to be reset. Um, and ideally, we don't want these to just be 
you know, pretty hobby tanks that are just there to look at. Really, I'd, I'd, I'd like each one to serve some sort of learning purpose, whether that be represent a, uh, an ecosystem, so maybe an African tank or a South American tank where the plants and the, the fish are logical. Um, at the moment, we've just got some barbs and, um, uh, yeah, mainly rosy barbs, a couple of tetras in there. These are uh, just some more yabbies. Um, down the center, our year 10 students, one of our major assessment tasks is they design and maintain their own aquariums throughout the year and constantly uh, keep track of water parameters and kind of write a report at the end of the year looking at the successes and challenges of, of, of uh, that system. Um, in order to keep these all warm without having to have a heater in each one, We've put um, some seed germination heat mats underneath, which has been working pretty well. Um, our younger students, our year nine students, get um, a yabby each to maintain. They also don't require a heater, um, and we use that to teach crustacean anatomy. You can imagine that having, I think, what, 24 students in here at one time can be a bit chaotic, so we're going to try and move some of these across to have a bit better of a system. This used to be a crab uh, salt water tank. We had an air conditioner that would keep the water cold. Um, that has failed, so that project's kind of fallen through. Um, what do we have? This, these are basically, they're just community tanks at the moment for storing the fish that were in these tanks. I've got some, um, I think there's a black widow tetras. This one I uh, had to isolate because he was very naughty and hurting all the other fish. We've got some sick looking cichlids in here that have been around for a very long time. This tank is not great. Um, this one too was our guppy breeding tank which has kind of collapsed towards the end of the year. I think a student dumped a whole bunch of food in there. We had a big nitrate spike. Um, lots of potential in these ones. I was hoping this could be a planted tank if we get a nice light to, to get, get it going. Ideally the back here would be um, some shrimp of different colors and we could do some shrimp breeding. Um, we haven't had amazing luck maintaining cherry shrimp and I'm not sure why because a lot of what I've read has said that they um, are pretty hardy but if you have shrimp advice or a, you know a video to, to point you to uh, please let me know. Um, what else? This is meant to be a pond scummy tank. Ideally we wanted to have uh, some plants that we could do some um, experiments with with photosynthesis for our biology course. Another community tank just here. Um, yeah, in terms of pumps and things, the pumps are off at the moment, but we've got air pumps up the top, just up there, um, and they feed through tubes to make sure that everything is oxygenated. Got some more storage up there as well. So yeah, sorry about the rambling. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, for some of you, you'd think, God, I wish I had this when I was in high school. I certainly know I would have. I, uh, I never actually owned a fish tank until I was given responsibility of this place, so I am myself quite a novice. Um, so if you see potential in anything here, if you see any safety issues, right, we've done our best to keep um, the electricity all tucked away. Uh, we haven't had this place for a couple of years now with no major issues. All of our tanks are, uh, have a metal bar in front of them so the kids can't pull them down on themselves. But if there's anything glaring um, that you think could be fixed, um, yeah, if you could see, you know, I haven't actually pointed out the numbers, but it, it kind of goes one to eight over here. If, you know, you could see anything that, any potential. Uh, I know I've said it a few times, but if you see anything that you think could uh, be done, just let me know and I'd be super appreciative. Oh, actually, I might just show you one last thing. How do we do water for all of these tanks? Um, our lab technician came up with this system, so he put in these... Um, tubes that run all around the roof in the other classroom as well. I'll take you upstairs. Basically, we have some big water vats just over here that uh, these two are fresh water. This one's empty at the moment um, but we put dechlorinator in there. There's some oxygenation to, to get the chlorine out and we just switch between them once each one runs out. This is our salt water tank and we need to have a salt water guy come and he basically delivers it down this pipe from the entrance at the end of the car park over there. We haven't had that done for a few years so um, yeah that salt is 
I think, very, very salty in there because it's kind of evaporated over time. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Um, let me know if you've got any ideas or thoughts. Thanks very much.